Welcome back to Harbor Unbox. Today I am back with another CPU and GPU scaling video. And this time I'll be focusing on the Ryzen 5 7600 and Ryzen 5 5600, which admittedly are two different classes of product. But I want to work out at which point the jump up from the affordable 5600 to the relatively expensive 7600 makes sense. So today, that's what we'll be doing. But before we do... Today's video is sponsored by Gigabyte and their Aorus and Aero RTX 30 series laptops. These excellent machines for gamers and creators are powered by up to an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 Ti graphics card and up to Intel Core i9 processors. Gamers will be interested in the Aura 17X featuring high-performance GeForce RTX graphics, support for DLSS and ray tracing, a super-fast 360Hz display, and heaps of cooling power. For creators, check out the Aero 16 with its 4K OLED display, portable form factor, and efficient GeForce RTX GPU. There's plenty of other options in Gigabyte's lineup as well, so learn more via the links below. Okay, so recently I updated our cost per frame data and found that a well-equipped Ryzen 5 5600 platform would cost $365 US, while a similarly equipped 7600 configuration was a massive 53% more expensive at $560 US. Now, across the 10 games tested, the Zen 4 processor was 33% faster on average, which did help improve its value, but even so, it was still 16% more costly per frame. Naturally, for those of you already on the AM4 platform, using an older generation processor, or maybe you just have a good quality DDR4 kit that you want to carry over, the 5600 is going to be a no-brainer, as it presents as a significantly cheaper upgrade. But if you're building an entirely new PC from the ground up, which you are really forced into doing if you do choose to go with the Ryzen 5 7600, but in that situation, is the newer Zen 4 processor and its more future-proof AM5 platform worth the investment? For those of you looking at buying a high-end GeForce 40 or Radeon 7000 series GPU, I'd say, yeah, the upgrade to Zen 4 is worth it over Zen 3. But what if you're using a previous generation GPU? I ask this question because slower GPUs will see most gaming situations more GPU limited than CPU limited, and therefore the difference between the 5600 and 7600 will be a lot less obvious. But of course, that all changes when you upgrade to a faster graphics card in the future, which is why CPU limited CPU testing makes the most sense. But a lot of you enjoy the GPU scaling benchmark, so let's get into it. First up, we have Watch Dogs Legion using the very high quality preset at 1080p, and when armed with the RTX 4090, the 7600 delivered 32% more performance than the 5600, hitting 149 FPS. The margins were much the same using the 6950 XT, though frame rates were higher overall due to the NVIDIA driver head issue, which often rears its ugly head in CPU limited scenarios. Now, using the much more modest 6650 XT, we see that the 7600 is now just 13% faster than the 5600, which admittedly is still a reasonable margin, but certainly doesn't come close to justifying the price premium. The total War Warhammer 3 results are pretty interesting, and probably more like what you'd typically expect to see from a GPU slash CPU scaling benchmark using three different GPU performance tiers. We see when using the RTX 4090 that the 7600 is a massive 46% faster than the 5600, reaching almost 300 FPS. But when downgrading to the 6950 XT, which is still a very powerful GPU, producing almost 200 FPS on average, the 7600 was just 3% faster than the 5600. Then, when testing with the 6650 XT, we see no difference in performance. So for a game like Warhammer 3, the 7600 just isn't worth it over the 5600. But if the 4090 results are any indication of future gaming performance, then the 7600 would be worth the premium. The question is though, when will that future become a reality? Hitman 3 has a mixed bag of results for us. Firstly, using the RTX 4090, we see that the 7600 is 42% faster than the 5600, so a seriously big performance advantage for the new Zen 4 processor. But that margin is closed down to 27% with the 6950 XT, and that's still a big win for Zen 4. But with less driver overhead with the Radeon GPU, the slower 5600 performs much better. Then once we move down to the 6650 XT, the performance margins are neutralized as the results become 100% GPU limited. Here we see that the A Plague Tale Requiem results are quite interesting. The Ryzen 5 5600 and Core i3 13100 really get smashed by the NVIDIA driver overhead using the RTX 4090, but this is far less of an issue for the more powerful 7600 though it was still 6% fast using the 6950 XT under these conditions. Point is though, 
using the RTX 4090, the 7600 was 36% faster than the 5600, while that margin is reduced to just 15% with the 6950 XT, and then completely neutralized with the 6650 XT. Now, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is a game where at least 200 FPS is advantageous, and as a competitive shooter, it's a game where the more serious players will opt for lower quality settings, not just to improve the frame rate, but in fact more so to improve the player's ability to spot enemies. So this is an example where a more powerful CPU, such as the 7600, is of real benefit, delivering 42% more frames than the 5600 using the RTX 4090, though that margin was reduced to 28% with the 6950 XT. Now, for most gamers, the 190-ish frames per second delivered by the 6650 XT, that'll be enough. And if you fall into that category, then for the most part, the 7600 has little to offer. But as demonstrated by the 4090 and 6950 XT, for the more demanding sections of the game, it's possible that the 7600 will deliver much more performance, even with a lesser GPU. The big advantage for the 7600 in Spider-Man Remastered is its use of DDR5 memory. Armed with the RTX 4090, the 7600 provided 35% more frames than the 5600, going from 82 to 111 FPS. And that margin remained much the same when using the 6950 XT, and interestingly, both Ryzen CPUs were slower with the 6950 XT, while the more CPU-limited 13100 actually received a performance boost. Then we see that with the 6650 XT, the results become largely GPU-limited, though the 7600 did still manage to best the 5600 by an 8% margin. The Shadow of the Tomb Raider scaling is very typical. Using the RTX 4090, the 7600 was 34% faster than the 5600, and that margin was reduced to 20% with the 6950 XT, as the 7600 became GPU-limited. Then with the 6650 XT, all three CPUs are heavily GPU-limited at around 110 FPS, which admittedly is more than enough performance to fully enjoy this title. Scaling in Horizon Zero Dawn is very similar to that of Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The 7600 was 24% faster using the RTX 4090 and 23% faster with the 6950 XT, so a clear performance advantage here for the newer Zen 4 processor. But by the time we get down to the 6650 XT, the results are entirely GPU limited with less than a 5% performance deviation. The Cyberpunk 2077 results are interesting, as here the 7600 delivered 35% more performance than the 5600 using the RTX 4090, so a massive performance advantage here for the newer Zen 4 processor. However, switching to the 6950 XT reduces that margin to 14%, as the Radeon GPU improves upon the performance of the 5600 by a 12% margin, while the 7600 is now GPU limited, reducing the performance there by 5%. Then, as you'd expect, we're GPU limited using the 6950 XT, and this saw all CPUs delivering around 95 to 96 FPS. The ACC results are all heavily CPU limited, regardless of the GPU used. Using the Radeon GPUs, the 7600 was 35% faster than the 5600, and quite oddly, that margin was reduced to 28% with the RTX 4090. Still, at around 30% faster than the 5600, the newer Zen 4 processor is offering massive performance gains in this title. The second last game we're going to look at is the Rift Breaker, and this one doesn't require massive frame rates, so any of these CPUs will work fine, but we're using this more as a tool to measure performance, and we find the 7600 is 40% faster than the 5600 using the RTX 4090, and then 22% faster with the 6950 XT, before the data becomes entirely GPU limited with the 6650 XT. Last up, we have Counter-Strike Global Offensive, and like ACC, this is another game that's heavily CPU limited, and as a result, the 7600 was between 26 and 28% faster than the 5600 across the board, even when using the 6650 XT. Now, here's a look at the 12 game average. Using the RTX 4090, we see that the 7600 was on average 35% faster than the 5600, though that margin is reduced to 23% with the 6950 XT. It's interesting to note that here the 5600 was faster using the 6950 XT, opposed to the RTX 4090, while the opposite is true of the 7600. And again, this is due to Nvidia's driver overhead issue, which hurts CPU performance when utilization is high. Then we see, thanks to heavily CPU limited titles such as CSGO and ACC, that the 7600 is still 7% faster on average using the 6650 XT, though this isn't necessarily the kind of margin that would get you to invest in Zen 4.
There's no denying that the Ryzen 5 7600 is much more powerful than the 5600. It just is. It's typically improved gaming performance by around 30%, but often much more than that, especially when heavily CPU limited. You also don't always need an extreme GPU such as the RTX 4090 to see the difference. The upgrade from the 5600 to the 7600 could certainly be justified with a much more affordable graphics card, but at the same time it's not going to be all that beneficial for everyone. In fact, I'd say for most Ryzen 5 5600 owners, the upgrade to the 7600 is a bit pointless. As I noted earlier, the upgrade to Zen 4 will cost you at least $560 US for a basic B650 board, of course the Ryzen 5 7600, and then 32GB of decent DDR5 memory. So a better alternative for AM4 owners looking to achieve 7600-like performance is the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D currently available for $340, a roughly 40% discount when compared to the 7600 upgrade for, again, basically the same level of performance. However, if you're a new system builder tossing up between these two CPUs, the choice is a lot more difficult. Well, maybe it's not. Obviously, if you want to spend as little money as possible, then the 5600 is the way to go. But if you're looking to maximize your investment, the 7600 might actually be the smarter choice. Although the 7600 package costs at least 53% more, we did see on average 30% more performance with a relatively high-end GPU, so a good performance uplift there, and further adding to the value of the 7600 is the AM5 platform, which will support future CPUs. Meaning the cheap and easy 5800X 3D upgrade situation 5600 owners can take advantage of, or those with much older AM4 processors for that matter, could end up being a similar situation for 7600 owners in a few years' time. Of course, we just don't know how the AM5 story will play out, but we know how the AM4 story has played out, and that story has now ended. In my opinion, there's really no wrong or right choice here. Both are very viable. Uh, the 5600 is still perfectly capable when it comes to gaming, especially if you're using a you know, more modest GPU, and you tend to mostly play single-player titles. But even then, it is still very capable as a competitive sort of multiplayer gaming CPU. But of course, the 7600 will generally take performance to the next level. So really, it is up to you to decide which of these options is best for you. And with that, I'm going to end this video here. Hope you liked it. Do one of those if you did. You can also subscribe for more content. We have Floatplane or Patreon. Uh, either of those help support the channel and give you access to some pretty cool perks. We do a monthly live stream. Tim and I get together and do that. Answer your questions live. Q&A server, uh, Discord server rather, where we, well, we have Q&A stuff there as well, but Discord server where you can ask questions, Tim and I are active there, Q&As, behind the scenes content, a lot of cool stuff, so if you're interested, check out Patreon Floatplane, but if not, that is perfectly fine, and I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, see you again next time.